Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Military cargo planes are indeed weapons of war, but not in the same way a fighter jet or bomber might be. For nearly a century now, cargo planes have played a vital role in military operations, facilitating the rapid transportation of personnel, equipment, supplies, and vehicles to support a wide range of military activities. However, there have been many attempts over the years to arm these aerial freighters with various weapons. In 2022, members of the Polish, U.S., and European Air Forces conducted a series of training exercises using Polish C-130s. The goal of the exercise was to utilize what are known as palletized missiles, also known as containerized missiles. Palletized missiles are stored, transported, and launched from protective containers or pallets. These pallets are typically designed to safeguard the missiles from environmental factors, such as dust, moisture, and extreme temperatures, and to simplify handling, loading, and transportation. Though the pallets have several benefits, the most notable is their ability to protect the warhead's sensitive components, which can easily be damaged during rough transport. These soldiers are actively constructing pallets for storing and transporting bombs. The process is relatively simple, but due to the weight of the munitions, it needs to be done with a certain degree of care and expertise. Once the containers themselves are stacked atop one another, the soldiers use cargo netting to secure the containers to the pallets themselves. This drastically reduces the chance they'll shift during flight, which could very easily become a life-threatening situation. Loading and unloading the pallets to and from the plane requires the use of heavy lifting equipment that boasts the same rollers as the aircraft's cargo hold. This helps the loadmasters move the pallets, which weigh several thousand pounds at this point, more easily, reducing the chance of any accidents. Norway and the United States recently began working together on a palletized munition system called Rapid Dragon. This involved transitioning the cargo planes carrying the devices into the actual delivery system for them. It allows the aircraft to perform an aerial drop of an entire pallet, which could theoretically allow for surprise attacks and help diversify the options various commanders have for attacking the enemy. The United States has a number of heavy and strategic bombers in its fleet. These aircraft allow Allied forces to launch devastating attacks against various adversaries. However, in recent years, the U.S. has also begun focusing on ways to utilize bombers to launch missiles. 
the Rockwell B-1 Lancer is one such aircraft. A supersonic, variable-sweep wing bomber introduced back in 1986. The B-1 can carry up to 75,000 pounds of ordnance in its three internal bomb bays and 50,000 pounds on six external hardpoints. These hardpoints have not been utilized since the late 80s, however. So in 2020, the 412th Test Wing out of Edwards Air Force Base fitted a B-1 with a joint air-to-surface standoff missile to demonstrate that the plane can still carry and deploy heavy weapons in this manner. The B-52 Strato Fortress is set to become the longest serving plane in history. A heavy bomber was first introduced in 1955, and the U.S. Air Force plans to have the aircraft service until at least the 2050s. One of the ways the B-52 is being repurposed is as a mothership for the AGM-183 ARRW, Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon. The ARRW is a hypersonic air-to-ground missile capable of traveling at speeds over Mach 5. The missile has a projected range of more than 1,000 miles and could theoretically evade many enemy countermeasures. However, the program was eventually canceled after several failed tests. By far, the most versatile class of aircraft is the fighter. These are small, fast, maneuverable attack craft that can attack targets in the air, as well as provide support for troops on the ground. Over the years, fighters have evolved to carry a wide range of weapons, from chain guns and rockets to missiles and bombs. Air-to-air -air missiles are generally used during in-air confrontations, known as dogfights, which can aid in neutralizing or destroying enemy aircraft. Meanwhile, air-to-ground missiles are designed to strike land-based targets, such as enemy vehicles, bunkers, infrastructure, or personnel. Some fighters even carry anti-ship missiles, which are specifically designed to do maximum damage to naval targets like ships and subs. Though the Cold War is over, tensions around the world remain high regarding the use of nuclear weapons. For this reason, Militaries like the United States still need to certify their aircraft for the delivery of these devastating bombs. In 2021, America's newest fighter plane, the F-35, successfully executed a full weapons system demonstration by releasing two B-61 12 thermonuclear gravity bombs. Each of these weapons weighs a full 715 pounds and measures nearly 12 feet long. The dummy missiles struck their target with amazing accuracy, ensuring the F-35 was fully compatible with the system. Other aircraft capable of deploying the B-61-12 are the B-1, B-2, B-52, F-18, A-6, A-4, F-16, and the F-15 Strike Eagle. The F-15 is easily one of the most successful fighters in the U.S. Air Force. 
Despite becoming active in the late 1970s, the F-15 remains integral on the battlefield. It boasts a maximum speed of Mach 2.5 and a combat range of more than 1,000 nautical miles. It is also capable of carrying a wide range of weapons, including air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles on a total of nine external hardpoints. It was also one of the first fighters to be certified to carry the B-61, which is a true testament to the Strike Eagle's versatility. The missiles carried by aircraft generally carry small payloads. When it comes to doing maximum damage to an enemy from far away, most militaries rely on what are known as ballistic missiles. This is the term used for long-range guided missiles designed to follow a trajectory that is primarily determined by gravity and the initial propulsion, rather than rely on continuous propulsion throughout the flight. During the Cold War, countries like the United States and the USSR, now Russia, built up massive arsenals of these missiles many of which were designed to carry powerful nuclear weapons. Those missiles with the most extended range are known as ICBMs, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. These incredible weapons are often capable of traveling thousands of kilometers to strike targets on other continents effectively. In many ways, ICBMs resemble NASA's space rockets, boasting an initial boost phase followed by a mid-course phase where they utilize a suborbital trajectory before descending toward their target. Again, much like launching a rocket into space, there is a precise launch process for ballistic missiles. In the case of the US, many of the ballistic missiles in use today are Minuteman missiles, a program that began in the 1950s. The modern Minuteman III variants are around 60 feet long and have a diameter of about 5.6 feet. Due to the Cold War, these missiles are located at launch sites throughout the United States and Europe. Due to their size, they must be stored in silos situated above or below the ground. Before they can be launched, the warheads must be activated, and if the device uses liquid instead of solid fuel, it will need to be fueled as part of the pre-launch process. The launch team then conducts a countdown, which involves a series of checks and tests to ensure that all systems are ready. Finally, at the designated moment, the engines will ignite. It's important to note that while ballistic missiles are huge threats, they are not invincible. Over the years, countries have developed several weapons capable of intercepting and destroying these missiles in mid-air. Unfortunately, nobody is entirely sure just how many ICBMs exist in the world or which militaries have them at their disposal. 
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.